Uh, what we're going to do here is make uh, make pegs for the holes that we're drilling in order to remove screws. And we can talk a little more in detail about that. But the machine we're using is a Morse lathe made in Worcester, Mass, sometime in the mid to late 1800s. So it's probably contemporary with Narcissus, which is the fun. It weighs a ton. Uh, I had to slide it out of my truck onto a stand that I made and had ready for it because I thought if I got it on the floor, I'd never be able to pick it up again, which is about true. It ran from a stationary steam engine using an overhead drive belt, uh, and my wife wouldn't let me have the stationary steam engine, so I've had to make do with an electric motor. <laughs> but it works, and it does what I want. In the work I do, I sometimes have to make big or small dowels or spindle-like things, and so I wanted a lathe that would do that. and. There are smaller, lighter lathes that would do that, but this thing was just a lot of fun, and it was going for scrap price, and I felt sorry for it. So I brought it home and cleaned it up and fixed it up, and uh, it works. Well, let me ask you about the different uh, segments okay. here. The, uh, it has different size pulleys for different speeds, so if one wants it to go faster, one would have to put the belt down there. Uh, the way I've arranged the motor right now, that's not possible. I chose uh, these two speeds that I would use because I wanted fairly slow speeds. I also don't trust what would happen to it at high speed because although it's a pretty heavy duty machine, it's got a lot of years on it and I don't want it just flying around. I don't know if it would take that. It has old bronze bearings. And now for those different speeds, would that be uh to, to use on different woods? Different materials, or different yeah. materials. It was largely a metal lathe. I mean, it was made, okay. made to be a metalworking lathe, and I will do some metal work with it too, probably, but I put a, a little wood cutting point on it here so that I can grab a hold of a piece of wood. It has a big chuck that one can use to grab hunks of metal, but uh, I've got that off just at the moment. Okay. Uh, luckily, the, the the parts for these are so standardized that it's still possible to get new things that'll go into the old lathe, which is astonishing cool. uh, to me, but there you go. Some things don't change every 10 minutes. Uh, the, the presenting problem is that we drilled these holes in order to get the screws out. We used a hole saw. I talked about that a little before, but we used a hole saw which is just a, a round saw with a set of teeth, and we cut around the steel screw and actually cut it out way down in there and probably can't see it. There is a steel screw head still stuck in there, but we've effectively cut out around it, and it's so loose now we'll be able to get it apart. But we want to fill these holes uh, because we'll have to re-drill them in order to put them on the car, re-drill a screw hole in there and put a, a proper stainless screw in that won't rot away like the steel one. So uh, what we need is a uh, dowel that we can drive in there and fill the hole. It'll have some glue surface so it'll grab hold. So I've taken pieces of uh, the poplar that we're using, and these are just scraps, and uh, made them into blanks for the dowels because this is a 5 8 inch hole. So I have to turn these down round to 5 8 and then uh, we can drive them in the holes and glue them and cut them off and, and it's the best repair that we can make <laughs> because it's old poplar and old poplar and seems a reasonable thing to do. Um, this little girl was designed for doing things like making screws, which is nice. So the cutter, and I'm just using a cutter that I'd use for steel because I want it raggedy so there will be glue surface. Uh, the cutter will travel down there on its own. I don't have to do anything, which is, a, say, a nice thing because it'll make it uniform diameter, and I just keep checking the diameter with calipers until I'm close to what I want, and then uh, then we're ready to use them, I think. Let me make sure I'm in gear here. All right, we'll fire her up, and away she goes. She doesn't go at any great speed. Nothing comes flying off here. And I could usually go do something while it travels down there.
like it's impossible to not love this thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's impossible yeah. to not love it. And the way you have the clock chime in when it's done is, yes. is amazing. It's hard to achieve. <laughs> I have to watch very carefully in order to make that happen. But the clock comes from about the same era. So. <laughs>